Hey guys, Tom here. Here's a chat I had with Ryan Stevenson of Zop a few weeks ago. We talk about the new album Dominion, which is out now. We talk about influences from Frank Zappa to the Beatles, Tame Impala, Shining, and loads more. Uh, we talk about the writing process, the history of Zop where the project's going. Um, so yeah, it's a great chat, in-depth chat. Check it out. Cheers. second album is done it is called Dominion it took three years of my life okay how was the process for you it was good yeah I finished the first album around late 2019 and then as soon as most of that work was done I started to write for the second album and the first track for this album was you I started to work on you and it started out as uh, an instrumental initially and then we were, me and Andrea, the drummer in Zop, we rehearsed you for maybe a few months, early 2020 and then I started to have vocal ideas on top, you know, just yeah. some melodies and I thought why not? Toxicity started out really early on in the writing process, but it took like a couple of years to get the structure right. And it's just a crazy, you've heard it obviously, mm. it's a crazy song that just never stops. And I think a lot of long epics, they probably have a lot more repetition and probably more jamming and improvisation. But mm. it's think, very much like the anesthetize or close to the edge. I suppose, yeah. Of the album. It was very difficult to write. Yeah. Um, and I, and I think it's just got like a unique approach with it because it's very psychedelic. The guitars are very washed out with loads of delay and reverb. Mm. And I just wanted to throw all sorts into the mix because I've been into a lot of psychedelic rock music from King Gizzard to Tame Impala. I don't know why Australia are coming up with all these amazing bands, but that's mm. what I've just uh, gravitated towards the last few years, listening to that type of music. So it's natural for me to have that um, sort of showcased on the new album in some respect, some elements, like I said, the, the washed out guitars and vocals and psychedelic elements, it just felt natural to incorporate that into the music. Towards uh, more of a pop sensibility rather 
not con I don't really think like that. Like I need to move in a pop sensibility. But like I said regarding you, it just felt natural to sing about a few things. Mm. And I'm not the best singer in the world, but you know, it's like my voice. Um, I think suits the type of music, and um, and I suppose it's just a personal expression, isn't it? The album is half instrumental, half vocals anyway, so there's a balance, I think, and some songs like Bush Nor Kilo just felt natural to keep as an instrumental, mm. because that's just the way it was written. But then there's like a short, whimsical thing like Wotiko Approaching, where yeah. It just felt like a piano ballad, but a very unusual one that went into some avant-garde. It's very avant-garde, that track. Very, almost like uh, Sergeant Pepper. While I was making the record, I made loads of um, recordings on my iPhone. And during that song, there's a recording of me on holiday with a few lads. Uh, went to Croatia in the summer of 2022. And a few of them have been just bickering between them, and there was this church bell going on in the back, and I thought this is a bit unusual, so I recorded it. And uh, while I was making with Tico Approach, I thought I just want some field recordings, some samples at this moment in the song, and that recording just felt perfect. I just slipped it in, it was like, there we go. You've got a rhythm with the church bell, and you've got these people talking and arguing. so be it. Because the first album was, what, 10 years in the making almost? Yeah, the first album was 10 years in the making, mm. uh, but it wasn't like I set out from the first day that I'm going to make a record. It was working on the songs in my bedroom as a guy in my, you know, early, late teens, sorry, late teens, early 20s. Mm. And then I think it was around 2017 when I started to take it more seriously when I got Andrea on board. Mm. Um, so, and this second album took, I suppose, two and a half years or just under three. Mm -hmm. it's, as people can hear, it's very dense music, you know, it's not yeah. like, I mean, some tracks are a bit simpler than others, but, so, go down here quickly. Uh, so yeah, there's a, there's a lot of thought that's been put behind the music, uh, I'll like, rephrase that, there's a lot of sort of, um, I don't know. I've thought about everything with the music and well, there's a lot of intention behind intention. every single note, yeah, every intention. single sound. Yeah, that's right. That's the right word. And I've just played. I like playing with the arrangements of songs. You know, it might start out with guitars, and then I take the guitars out and add keyboards. The, these type of ideas. And that's what I've done with Dominion. I just live with the music for three years. good uh, but it would be fun to do that but it, it just wouldn't be up to these standards in my opinion I think this year 2023 will be a, a more productive year for Zop because I like I said I've got another record in, in the pipeline which is about done mm. and uh, so hopefully there'll be two records out this year that's what I want to achieve mm. whether I will I don't know and you self-release it Self-releasing, and again, this is something Self-producing. Self-producing, self definitely. Self-mixing, definitely. <laughs> but you never know. I mean, by the time this interview is done, I might get an offer for somebody to release the record, and if it's a good offer, why not? You know, but if I don't, then I'm happy to self-release my own music because I've got complete control over it, and I suppose I get the monetary reward back, 
after all the hard work I put into it, which is nice to receive mm. when you've been working on an album for two years. But yeah, I suppose this era at the moment of Zop um, includes this album Dominion and the next one because I wrote like an hour and a half, maybe like one hour, 30 minutes of music um, in 2022. You know, what, 2020 to 2022, I suppose, over two years. So it's almost like the next two records, Dominion and the one after, have a very similar sound. Yeah. And uh, I've just worked hard to create a lot of the music the last couple of years, which has a more of a jazzy sensibility to it. And as you say, it goes beyond the cliches or the, this Canterbury, Neo Canterbury sound. It goes beyond that. One of the last albums truly blew you away with Shining's Black Jazz, which was released in 2010, so 13 years ago. Has there been any any similar music recently that you, that's blown you away from any scene? When I say like it's blown me away, I think what I mean by that is it's the last thing that almost seemed like innovation mm. to me. Although some people would argue that there's no innovation in music, it's just changes all the time. Mm. Um, but yeah, I suppose 13 years ago, I was like 20 or so, uh, 21. And uh, around that time, you're still sort of formulating your music taste. So that, that's when I was probably had more of an impression, you know, more impressionable, whatever the, the word is. Um, but yeah, the last few years, the good thing about the good thing I've noticed about my listening habits is that I'm discovering things all the time that connect at a different time. For example, the Beatles, like I said, really been into the Beatles, post uh, Sgt. Pepper, um, been into African jazz music a bit, which is something I'd never imagined I'd be into. Artists like Falakuti mainly, yeah. Um, just because, again, I don't really judge music from a genre point of view, it's just like I can hear that the arrangements and the songwriting has a unique approach and it has been a lot of thought put into the music again which I like. What have I talked about with you? 1975? 1975, a lot of pop music, yeah. I mean I listen to a lot of pop music. Again it probably doesn't work its way into Zop, the sound of Zop. But uh, yeah I still like a lot of commercial pop music. I suppose like I said jazz is one thing that... Dido. Dido, yeah, I mean, mum dance, mum dance, <laughs> electronic music, Apex it's Twin, Apex Twin, I'm yeah, in your music taste more than, <laughs> yeah. The thing is, it's just you shouldn't be discriminating it. It's just good music and bad music yeah. to me. That's all it is. And there are times when I'll be fascinated by a certain artist or certain Zappa, style. I guess you're very vocal about Zappa. I think, yeah. I mean, Bushnell Kilo is very Zappa, Zappa-esque track. I think there's one thing about Dominion that I think is true. I've gone back to my musical roots mm. with this album and I think some people are aware that obviously Zop started out as a Zappa pastiche mm. but then it quickly morphed into something that was probably a bit more Canterbury or whatever. Mm. Um, and now it's going more Tame Impala y Zappa, everything. Again, there's everything it's in the music. Just, yeah, but I think Zappa sound. is probably a song like Bushnell Keeler, very Zappa inspired. Mm. Um, you know, I quite like ideas from Hot Rats where you recorded things at half time and sped them up and I've done stuff mm. like that with with elements on this album, Dominion. Mm. Like, for example, on Bushnell Keela, I sped up some of Jorgen's saxophone parts and then and then uh, you basically recorded it at half time and then sped it up so it sounds like a bit comical. Yeah. Because you have a project, a project called Rulem as well. Yeah, I do black metal. Yeah, I really like black metal. Yeah, in 
as up as your summer side. Well, I suppose Dominion is more of a summer. I think of it as a summer album, yeah. just because I've got memories making the bulk of the record in the summertime in, in Britain, in the UK. Uh, but yeah, black metal is something I've been into as long as Prague. I remember being into black metal. I remember listening to bands like Burzum when I was 14 or 15. Mm. And being just as fascinated by that yeah. as, say, Egg or <laughs> the obscure progressive rock. Yeah. Do you want to go for a walk, by the way? <laughs> ambition without sounding pretentious it's like what can we do now that's even better than the, the last record or different that approach I think is just way more exciting mm. uh, as a creator rather than right so the first album did well let's recreate it mm. I don't think people realize maybe some fans realize that you put everything in everything into the the album and you can't really top it because you put everything into perfecting the first one so, in order to top it, you have to do something different. It's the only way. I've yeah. got a guy called Jorgen Munkeby, who's in a band called Shining, the Norwegian Shining. Mm. And uh, he did a really good job on Bushnell. The Good Shining. The Good Shining. <laughs> I'm not really listening to the Swedish one. Well, the more of like depressive black metal. Yeah. Uh, just, yeah, the Norwegian Shining's more interesting. Yeah. They released a record called Black Jazz. Jazz. Black Jazz, yeah. 10 out of 10. Which, as we said earlier, is probably one of the last things that really blew me away in my okay. early 20s mm. that fascinated me because yeah, it just had that nice. industrial yeah. element. Um, but that the, extreme metal element. Yeah, and the progressive prog. element. Yeah. yeah, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so there's a few guests. Uh, we've got Sally Minia, who's the daughter of Kerry Minia, uh, the keyboard player in Gentle Giant. She's singing on the first track, the opening track. She's doing some Lars. Okay, in the style of, I don't know, the Northern Nets from Atfield in the North. Again, another element which is continued from the first album to the second album. Mm. Because it's nice to have female voice, it's a nice backing. Yeah. Just a great sound. Right then, here for some milk. Doesn't make any sense, does it?